Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So happy to have you here with us as we're now truly winding down to the end of the summer. It's the last week in August and time has moved past. I hope that you've had a great time this summer. I hope you've enjoyed all the, the hot weather that we've had. I pray that you're taking good advantage, good advantage of it to relax, to enjoy, to loosen up. Sometimes you got to loosen up a little bit, got to have a little bit of fun, got to relax. You need that. Otherwise, you end up stressed out all the time. We don't want that. We want the best of you and the best of you has to relax a little bit. So uh, uh, I hope that you've enjoyed the summer and you know this is a time of year now we start switching our mindsets. We're getting our children ready to go back to school. We start thinking about education. We start thinking about development and growth and uh, that's a great thing as well. It's a great thing to get yourself ready to develop and to grow. So we'll talk more about that as we head into the next couple of weeks. Got some great things planned for the fall for you here as well. And so looking forward to being able to share some of that coming up in the next few weeks of what's happening here at Destiny Preparation Church. I do want to remind you that you can join us here at the church, 1405 Lyle Avenue on Lyle, right near Mount Reed Boulevard on the northwest part of the city. We're right across the street from McDonald's in the plaza across the street. And that plaza runs all the way from Mount Reed right down to here. So we're right down the street from Mount Reed across from McDonald's. Join us 1130 a.m. 1405 Lyle Avenue. We've got room for you. We're ready for you. We got air conditioning for you. We're looking forward to having a great time in the Lord and, and receiving something great. And I believe if you'll come that you'll find some people that love the Lord, some people that are happy to see you and welcoming to have you here and also who are pressing into the presence of God we've been talking about over the past few weeks. I want to share with you a little bit now about that, uh, another aspect of that pressing into the presence. I want to talk to you about being passionate about God. There are some things that only come from God based on our true, earnest desire and passion for it. God responds to passion. It's one thing to say, you know, I want this. It's a whole other thing to want it bad enough to do whatever it takes to receive it. God loves it when we're passionate about him and it makes him move towards us as we move towards him. So I want to share a little bit about this. I hope it blesses you and I hope that it will make you more passionate to come and put God in that place of being first and stretch out and do what it takes to get whatever it is that God has for you. God bless you. I pray this blesses you and I hope we'll see you here at Destiny Preparation Church real soon. And how many of you appreciate the value of being in the presence of God? I hope that you can really gather and under, understand that, uh, how valuable it is to be able to enter into the presence of God. Uh, think about being in front or being able to communicate directly with the, the God, the creator that made you and the one that has all power. We call, call him omniscient. We call him all powerful, omnipotent. And we know that he can do all things. And one thing that we see is we look at the record of the biblical record where God is, things happen. Amen. Amen? That's something to be excited about. Where God is, things happen. Things change. God moves in the midst of things and he causes things to change because he is just that uh, amazing. He, he, he owns it all, controls it all, and he can make things happen that we cannot make happen because he's able. So when we're with him and when we are on, he is on our side that means that anything is possible for us. I just want you to understand how important, how valuable it is. If we can get in the presence of God, if you thought about, <laughs> you saw an example uh, a week or so ago, you know, of how powerful it is to be able to get, be in the presence of someone of power, right? We saw this week Kim Kardashian have a conversation with the president. He's Trump, but he's the president. He has the power and being able to get into the presence of a person with power. She was able to change something that nobody else could change. All the courts couldn't do it. All the lawyers couldn't do it. Everybody's wisdom couldn't do it. But when just one meeting with, for a few moments with the right person of power changed a person's entire situation in life. Now, if being in the presence of the president can make such a change, can you imagine the potential of being in the presence of God? 
Now, what I want you to really understand is that God offers us that opportunity. In fact, he, he willfully opens up. You know, uh, Kim said that she had to go months trying to, trying to arrange a meeting, calling, making requests, calling, contacting people, trying to use whatever network she could to just get to that one meeting. All that time and effort just to have one meeting. But yet God actually calls for us and opens the door for us. He wants us to come into his presence. In fact, he not only come, wants us to come to him, he'll come to us. That's the power and the potential that's there. Can you imagine, just imagine for a moment, if you were in the presence of God right now, I mean, literally standing before God, what would you ask? What thing in your life would you want to see change? Knowing that he can do anything in all things, what is it that you would ask of him? And think of the power of what could change in your life just by being able to speak directly, interfacing directly with God. I want you to realize that that is the position that God has allowed for us in this day. In fact, that's the position he always wanted. It was what he always had from the book of Genesis and Adam and Eve all the way forward. He initially intended to be with his people, to be interactive with his people. The thing that separated us was sin. Because understand that sin is the polar opposite of God. It's everything that God is not. It's something that he can't mix with. It's oil and water trying to come together. God could not approach the people that he made. Think about your child after birthing a child and bringing a child into this earth. Think about if you were put in a position where you were no longer able to touch that child. You wanted it, you loved it, you created it, you brought it here, but now for whatever reason, you can't touch it. Some of us just go crazy, your child gets sick, you have to lose your mind, right? Talking about, what do you mean I can't touch them, I can't hold them, they're contagious. You know, if, you ever, ever, if you've ever had a child in the hospital and they had them uh, in, in somehow contained in a way that you could not touch, there's something even just about being able to touch, and you could have lose your mind not being able to touch them when you feel they're in need. That's the way God is with us. He's separated from us from sin. He, though he may want to be with us and touch us, there's been a separation there. But God has done so much in order to make it possible, to enable us to be able to be in his presence. He wants to be in his presence. And that's why it's important for us to understand how we can do that. There is so much at stake. There is so much opportunity for us to be able to be in his presence. And we don't want to just lose that opportunity. We don't want it to just pass us by. We don't want to have considered or thought, you know, or find out later. Well, you know, you could have been in God's presence and talked to him about that or asked him that, but you missed it somehow. Amen. You don't want to die and, and, and wake up and find out, you know what? You could have been connected to me the whole time and you was just messing around. <laughs> Amen. So it's important for us to look at this, to really understand what God offers and what it is that we need to do to be in the presence of God. Out of this story in Acts chapter 2, as we looked at the presence of the Holy Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit coming in, God's presence coming in, we've said that Pentecost represents being at the very presence of God. That's what it represents. That's what it means. It means I've made it to the presence of God. Now that I'm there, what do I need to do to interact? It? If I know God is standing right outside of that door right now, what do I need to do to get him from outside in? Amen. If I know that God is all around me, hearing everything that is said, knowing everything that goes goes on, what do I have to do to get him to be more directly interacting with me? So on the day of Pentecost, it gives us some indications of what it took in order for them to reach the presence of God. And so we've been studying that over these past few weeks about what it is to be there. And we talked about how on the day of Pentecost, they were unified. They were in one accord, the Bible says, in one place. In other words, they were all gathered in the right time, in the right place with the, with the same mindset. Sometimes one of our biggest challenges is getting in the right mindset because there are so many things that distract us, even though we're looking for God there because God is a spirit and we deal mostly with the natural. Oftentimes the natural things get in the way of our spiritual pursuits. Amen. We, we, we would like to be with God, but I see the situation I'm going through. I see the problems that I'm having. I 
see the pain that I'm feeling. I see the stresses and the situations that are going on. I see the bills that I have to deal with, the problems I'm going to have to handle as soon as I walk out the door. And so oftentimes, so many distractions keep us from really putting our attention on the right thing. But when we become in one accord in one place, then the Bible says suddenly, suddenly, everybody say suddenly. In other words, it didn't take a whole lot. It didn't take so long. It didn't take, you know, working and working. It just took getting there. Once they were there, then suddenly or instantly, God showed up. God, that shows us that God is waiting for us. As soon as y'all get it together, I'm going to be there. It shows us that we've got some ownership, some responsibility in terms of if we want to reach God. God has already made the way. He's already done. Listen, he's done so much work to get us to this place. He had to deal with so many things. He had to send his son to die in our place. He had to shed blood. He had to move things out of the way. He now makes his presence, his spirit uh, uh, present and available to us. He has done everything that needs to happen. He tells us, enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. It's up to you. You, The opportunity is there. All you've got to do is what? enter into it. So he's made every way possible for us to be there. Now it's up to us. Somebody say it's up to us. If I look at somebody, tell them it's up to us. Because I want you to understand that from a corporate perspective, we are all in this together. We're in it together. We're in it together. We all have to be in it. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament, the story of the men in the time of Joshua, where they had gained power and authority over over, uh, uh, the land of Jordan. But in the midst of that, there says that there was one man who had taken one one idol and hid it in his midst when they were supposed to be uh, free of idols and focused on God alone. And he was to be the only God. And they had their instructions. One man in the midst held back the blessing of of God on the entire congregation. And when I, by congregation, I mean an entire nation, millions of people missed out on reaching God because one man and one family had turned the other direction. They were not in one accord. It's up to us. We're in this together. We have to come together. We have to make up our minds that that we're focused on the right thing. When we are in one accord in one place, then the suddenly comes. Last week, we talked about how in that place, what happened, the presence of God, the very, the very, the very presence of God showed up in their midst. You know, when God's there because things start changing. Are y'all hearing me today? Things start changing. People who were timid and quiet and afraid all of a sudden start speaking out and something begins to speak through them and they realize it's not even me. It's not me doing it, but there's something inside of me that's causing some change, some things that I couldn't do. I was afraid of doing. All of a sudden, I'm empowered to do. Why? Because the presence of God had come. And when God's presence comes, things begin to change. When they began to focus themselves not on what they could do and how they were going to deal with it and how they were going to change it or make it happen. But when they began to focus on God, listen, this is a a key we've got to get. So many times we focus on how we're going to solve it, how we're going to fix it. When what we really need to focus on is the God who is the fixer of all things. I'm not able to do it, but God is able. I may not have the ability. I may not have the idea. I may not even have the strength, but I know a God that can do all things. There comes a time when you've got to stop leaning on yourself and look for something greater than me. The, 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 the man said, I look to the hills from which cometh my help. I don't have it. I don't know what to do, but I know where to turn. There comes a time when you've got to realize that you may not have it all, but I know who to go to. I may not be able to solve it all myself, but I know who has the answer. I don't have it, but I know who does. So I look to somebody who can fix my problem. God, I need you to move where I can't move. I'm confused. I'm tired. I've been struggling. I've been trying to figure out and answer everything. Lord, help me with my children. I've been trying to get them right and trying to teach them right. But sooner or later, I got to let it go and put it in your hands because my God is able able to do all things according to his power and his riches and his grace. Amen. I trust in God. And so we come together in one accord. And so the power of God began to come in and change the situation. And one thing I want, what I want you to see today is just the aspect that the mindset of passion towards God, 
Sometimes we have to learn how to be passionate. There are times we can get really, you know, neutral, bland, kind of take it or leave it. God is not a take it or leave it God. Amen. Sometimes we come in, even in whatever we're doing, we're praying. And, 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 you know, the Bible tells us if any man asks anything of God, he has to ask nothing wavering. You can't be half in and half out of anything related to God. You've either got to be all in or you might as well be all out. If you're here today and you want something from God, you might as well step all in it or you might as well go home. But as long as we're here, amen. I said, as long as we're here, amen, we might as well go for it. There's something about being passionate for God. There's something about God that, that draws, that, that, that responds to not only what we, we, we just say, but when our heart gets connected to it, when our heart begins to drive, when we're compelled towards something of God, when it, when it comes from the inside out, there's something that draws God because he is a passionate God. Passion means to strong, means strong and barely controllable emotion. That's passion. Strong and barely controllable. I can scarcely contain it. I, uh, passion, by definition, is emotional. A lot of times there, there's a lot of debate, you know, as to whether, you know, how, how emotional we have to be when it comes to, to relating to God. But I want you to understand when, when something is personal to you, when something really means something to you, when you think about your children and what they mean to you, when you think about your family next week, thinking about Father's Day, when you think about those that are close to you and situations that have meaning to you, tell me it don't get emotional. Amen. Amen. Because there's something about when you truly feel for something, it draws something in you to be passionate about something is to be barely controllable in terms of your emotion i'm not just feeling it I, i'm just i can barely hold it back i'm i'm so excited sometimes you see your children you know i, I have my dog and i just all i gotta do is we put a little food in front of him and he can barely control himself he's jumping and running and flipping he's all excited you know there, there's something about he's emotional he's an emotional dog <laughs> whatever it is he's into it he's all into it he's jumping and he's running you know that when we when there's something about the situation that draws on us amen we can barely control the emotion that we're seeing you see people talk about certain things and tears start running down their face why is it because there's emotion that they're trying to control but they can barely control it because they're passionate about the situation that they're talking about some people get angry and they can they can barely Barely control it because it's passionate, right? When you mad, you mad. Amen? You happy, you happy. And so emotion is part of it and passion is uncontrollable, barely controllable emotion. In the upper room, they, they, they experienced this transition that took place that brought them to a place that started with distractions. The Bible says they were in and out of there for about 10 days after Jesus had told them, go and wait. And so they went and they're waiting. And y'all know how we are. Wait, what am I waiting for? Why I got to wait? Why am I even here? What am I doing? I don't know what I'm waiting for. I got other things to do. My life is in danger. They were thinking, you know, the longer we stay here, the closer they come to finding us. How long we got to wait here? We need to come up with a plan. We need to do something. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, the distractions come in. God sent them with an instruction, but all these other things. Okay, I'm waiting. How many of y'all don't like to wait? Any, anybody know what I'm talking Anybody? Just a few. Everybody else is real patient. All right, praise God for y'all. But for those of us who know what I'm talking about, about you know sometimes you don't like to wait come on admit it tell the truth right you know, why do i need to wait I, I i want it now i want to move on i want to get this done let's do it you you've ever been somewhere you know somebody's supposed to be picking you up somebody's supposed to come on now you want to raise those hands again uh, somebody's supposed to be doing something for you somebody's coming over the house to take care of something you need and depend on somebody to give you a ride to take you somewhere and they have not shown up tell me tell me y'all still patient Anybody know what it is to not? 
Distractions come in. And so you lose track of where it is. You know, that I had a mission, but now I'm distracted because this has come up and that, and I'm worried about that, and I'm focused on that. They started out in a mindset of distraction. There was no unity. There was debate. There was argument. The Bible shows us a little of it before they could even deal with so whatever promise was come up. Their, their first thing was we got to deal with who's placing, taking Judas's place. They, they weren't waiting for the spirit. They were focused on trying to deal with what they could deal with. Sometimes you get to the point where you've done everything you can do and now you have no other choice but to wait because you've tried everything you've tried and you could try and done everything you could do. And now you've gotten all that out the way and here you are sitting and waiting. So they went from distraction and somehow they transitioned from distraction to focus. They got out of thinking about everything and worrying about everything and doing everything. And somehow they got to a point where they were focused. Everybody, you know what? We've dealt with this and gone through that. But God told us about this promise. And what are we going to do? Well, let's just begin to pray about it. And they began to pray about it. And as they prayed about it, it brought them into focus. Sometimes the reason we need to pray is so that it brings us into focus. Come on, y'all need to hear this today. There are so many things that we are scattered about and fighting and wrestling with. That's why sometimes rather than doing, you need to stop and you need to sit down and you need to quiet down and you need to give your spirit some rest and begin to pray. That's when God can speak to you. That's when God can open doors. That's when you'll find changes or thoughts that you didn't think of on your own. And so somehow they transition all these 120 people amen from distractions to being focused and when they began to focus that's when they began to get in one accord and that's when they began to surrender because sometimes you need to let go of everything you're trying to do in order to get your mind focused on what God wants to do. Come on, y'all need to hear that today. Let go of what you're trying to do so that God can show you what he wants to do, which means you've got to surrender. Okay, God, I let it go. I give up. I quit. I'm tried and I've tried. But God, what do you have to say about it? When they began to focus on it, that's when the suddenly came and they moved from distraction to focus to now all of a sudden there's intense emotion the bible shows us here the emotion kicked up why they were excited they began to praise they began to speak and they didn't speak quietly oh they didn't thank you god oh god you are so good thank you god. because they had barely controllable emotion they were passionate about what was happening the bible says that the spirit of god began to come in that clothing tongues showed up over them and they all began to speak with tongues and they didn't just keep it to themselves the bible says it got so noisy in there it said when they heard verse six says when they heard the loud noise everyone came running can y'all imagine if it got so loud in here that people started coming down Lyle Avenue people in their cars pulled over because they wanted to know what is going on what is going on in there it looked like the building was shaking it looked like there was a cloud up over there. we don't know what's happening what was going on when the presence of God came they moved amen into a, an emotional state because they were excited because they knew this is what they had been waiting for because they had anticipated it and now here it is I'm here to tell you when the presence of God begins to move you ought to be excited about it. You ought to be passionate about it. There's something about when God moves, you can't just be still. It gets you excited because there's something about God changing your life that does something that you can't do yourself and you ought to praise him for it. Something changed, something began to happen, something moved, something switched around and they began, amen, to, to, to move for him, towards him with passion. You know, me, today many people debate whether uh, the proper place, what's the proper place of emotion in the church, in the church service. Some people, we have all extremes when it comes to church service. We have those that are as, as, as a-emotional as possible. Where, where there is, you know, everybody just repeat after me and everybody bow your heads in silence and we speak and you hear and, and, and there is just, that's just no emotion whatsoever. If there is emotion, you cut that up because that's not supposed to be here. We go from that extreme to we go to the other extreme where the church is all about emotion. There are some people that come to church more for emotion than they come for God. Y'all think I'm getting 
Amen. They, because there, there's something, they, they, they feel that there's something there that it, they just want to get out. And, and they want to, wanna, and they call that oftentimes God. But I want you to understand there's something between those two uh, extremes. You know, there, there is a, there's an aspect of experiencing with God uh, that, that cannot be replaced just by a, a, a logical understanding. Your logic of him will not replace having an experience with him. I can come here and I can give you many instructions of the logic of an understanding of God, but your understanding is not the same as your experience. I can tell you that one plus one is two, and you can logically or logistically understand that that's the case. But when you're a child and you suddenly realize that revelation that, hey, I put these, this one together with this one, and now I got two of them. I got twice as much as I had before. I got this much more. It's a different thing. Experience is different from understanding. And so you want to go beyond just an understanding of things, and, and you want to go beyond just an emotional release as well, because it's not just about coming and releasing your emotion. Just because you released emotion doesn't mean you saw God. Amen. Are y'all with me? Our objective in the church, our objective in coming together here today, it's not just social. It's not just connection. It's not just doing the right thing. Understand this, church. The objective of coming together is to meet with God. 